later on, if people are open in the first place to say, hey, this is our service, you can use it, but this is what we do, then I can make a decision at the time, and if I, if I like the service, I will use it. But uh, to find out afterwards uh, is not it, it is not very good. Again, something that the mainstream consumer doesn't really care about. Yeah, yeah we, we mm, can it's talk. a bit like cigarettes, actually. <laughs> Um, I can't make a comment, you know that. <laughs> that was a clever little comeback there, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I could give a better example. Actually, I could now, use uh, mobile. If I smoking, that would, have, that would have stopped you in your tracks, wouldn't it? I haven't. But, uh, no, I would have used a different <laughs> example. Actually, many of us are using... I actually had a very long discussion with a friend today in lunch, and uh, it was something along the lines of uh, an increasing number of people are very proud to have this uh, uh, permanent 3G connection on their phones that they're using to surf the internet and all kinds of applications that are broadcasting throughout the night and you know they sleep next to their phones and they're using it to surf the web to watch films HGTV and stuff but they don't think about the amounts of radiation this thing emits. I mean people used to say that you'll be fine using the phone uh, without getting brain tumors you know if you did less than an hour a day well people might not be talking to the phone for an hour a day but they're using this 3G connection that's broadcasting to antennas far far away so it's a very strong radiation it, but, you know, I mean, my, my opinion is, I'm, I'm sort of swung between two opinions. I don't know whether there's a threat in it, and to be fair, I don't give it a lot of thought and don't have a concern. However, I do cast my mind back to the, the early early 1900s where people were smoking, it was fashionable to smoke, there was no problem with doing it, in fact it was seen as a good thing. And then yet, years down the line, we now have a problem where we've got lots of people very, very ill, a lot of people that passed away uh, as a result of smoking, and something which was overtly encouraged by everybody um, at the time. So uh, it's it's one of those things that, unfortunately, we're going to have to sit here and wait until uh, the, the figures start coming out, maybe in 20, 30 years' time, when we actually see the... Well, recently, I mean, there are actually studies on that, which aren't funded by the carriers. And uh, there was a major case in Italy, and that's not the case where they actually tried to uh, convict the scientists for not predicting an earthquake. It was a case where a person sued, uh, he, got, he got some brain cancer or something, which is a very sad thing. I, I just heard a story from a person close to me about it. It's, 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 it's a really horrible thing when it happens. And, but, you know, and he, he basically got brain cancer, and the judge ruled, in fact, based upon, I suppose, some evidence, like scientific studies, that, that it, it, it can legally be tied to the use of the phone. Um, the so... I mean, the problem is with it, with this, obviously we have one case, and uh, that's very tragic, but we live in a society now where everything has a warning sticker on it. It's not a warning sticker for your own good, it's a warning sticker to cover the backs of the people that uh, have stuck it on there. For example, mm -hmm. warning, hot water, well, it's hot water tap, but you've still got a sticker sign there. Um, warning, do not run on the stairs, and I saw that today when I was down at the train station. I mean, it's pretty obvious not to run on stairs. So this tells you a story, actually, of who sued and why. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what you see, it's true. There's a funny episode of The Simpsons, I think, where Homer had a sign for everything, and just the whole planet was plastered in signs, warning signs of potential hazards. And it, I, I swear, I don't blame this health and safety, uh, these health and safety policies themselves, because how this has come about is purely by people taking up these cases and going with the, the suing culture that seems to be uh, an epidemic in this country. So they put these signs there to cover the backs to prevent that, and mm -hmm. so these health and safety regulations are a result of that. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to do anything now without a risk assessment. Well, if you actually have to do a risk assessment, which I do in the course of my work, you'll find that all the things on the risk assessment are common sense. And if you didn't consider if you didn't consider them in the first place, you shouldn't be doing the things that you're doing. Um, it's, it's completely silly, and it really isn't meaningless rubbish just written on a bit of paper to cover the backs in case it goes to court because somebody sues for tripping over and grazing their knee. Or, I think uh, it's usually coming from the lawyers themselves. If you look at the yeah. I'm not sure if it's just a UK thing, okay? Because I know in the states they have these too, but but the number of advertisements you see in TV between you know in commercial breaks mm -hmm. uh, is it's pretty amazing how many of the lawyers. Uh, are, are just basically trying to latch on to people and saying, oh, have you been hurt in the past two years in an accident, so and all that sort of stuff. Basically trying to find business and urge people to sue when they're, you know, not really intending to do so, but just mm -hmm. using an opportunity to, uh, and they say something like, you know, if you, you know, no we no, 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 we no fee and, and all that sort of stuff. And, and maybe they know the laws and they, uh, kind of have some experience in how to change in the case and the, and, and, and the allegations and so on kind of win the case. So, uh, but 
again, it just comes down to to being open and honest. The, like I know that smoking, for example, is incredibly bad for your health. I also know the implications and the problems that can arise later in life, and sometimes even earlier in life, as a result of smoking. So I can't be in a position to sue a, a tobacco company if I get any of these illnesses, which I'm fully aware of and fully accept the risks. Uh, so I mean, it's all about education, and again. It sort of goes back to what I was saying about privacy. You know, as long as I'm aware of something before I take it on, then I make a decision based on that knowledge. Not if I started smoking and then realised ten years down the line, well, hang on, this thing will kill you. I'd say, well, hang on, you didn't tell me that at the time. Whereas, obviously, I'm fully aware of the, the implications of it when I started smoking, um, and more for me for continuing. So, anybody out there who's uh, considering starting, don't. Um, I don't say you that way. I don't say if you've ever touched a cigarette. So, uh, <laughs> well, I touched them. M- moving, moving on to f- from filthy addictions like smoking that I've got. I touched um, them because you put them in my hand. Yes. <laughs> but I was very curious about it when I was a boy. Actually, if you want to go, I used to. Uh, I was about five, and was, you know, I was playing with a magnifying glass, and I lit one of them, and then I put it in my mouth, and I was just, you know, half an hour on it. Uh, but I think that's the last time I actually got any anywhere close to smoking something. So, yeah. And that's probably so. that was probably the best thing you ever did because it stopped you from it doing was, it. Exactly. It was yeah. a very very bad experience. As yeah. well. I remember choking on it. Mm. And if I'd probably done that, I'd probably be sat here talking about and moaning about smoking. Um, right. Moving on to more pleasant topics. Um, have you got another subject? I think I should very Wait. briefly mention. Um, the only one time, oh, it's, it's very rare that I support anything that, uh, well, not support, but uh, champion anything that Microsoft uh, releases. Um, and there's something that I, I cannot not mention because it's so big at the moment. And that's uh, Halo 4 is coming out for the Xbox. And whilst I don't use my Xbox anymore, I must admit I have a pang of uh, envy at wanting to have a go on it. Um, because I just have the I have the PlayStation 3, and obviously it's not a, a PlayStation 3 title. I think with Microsoft, especially the and I, and I often get criticised for always highlighting the bad of Microsoft. I'm the first to say that I don't. If I think that Microsoft releases something which are good, is good, I'll um, I'll champion it. And I certainly think, and I know we've had our disagreements on this, Roy, but in terms of the Xbox, I think Microsoft scored a winner. Not so much maybe in the revenue that we received from it was. They are making a profit now on it. They're, no, they're losing. Well, Look at the think, results back from it. Actually, this is something we didn't cover. They lost, I think it was a quarter of a billion or something in the Xbox thing back in April. And I'm not keeping track of the results anymore, but they're actually losing money. But I, th- I think in the eyes, certainly in the eyes of the consumer, um, the Xbox was a hit, regardless of how much money was lost or made. Xbox or Xbox 360? 360, 360, sorry. I, I, uh, in the UK, in the UK, because yeah, so, this is a very strong country for them. We go to Japan or some other, other countries. I'm yeah, not sure um, it's the same perception. That's that's always been the way of the consoles, though. It's actually the same for Apple. Uh, apparently, uh, uh, what's the... Oh, the growth of the iPhone apparently only faces Android in two countries, and that's the States, which is the home of the home of Apple. And the UK, which is the only other exception. So, so actually, uh, today I saw massive, like 50, you know, it's like Ala 4 took over St. Anne Square. It's just amazing, like 50 meters of a banner, the same Ala 4, and yeah. that's about it. So, that's, that's going to be expensive to make that. To be fair, um, and to be fair, with the previous release of Halo, unless somebody corrects me, we've had no. There was no issues over the release. There was no major bugs. I and mean, we've seen a lot of PlayStation 3 titles where they're being released and they haven't been quite ready and there's been a bug. Um, uh, I'm sure that happened with 360 as well. But in the case of Halo, you know, it's been a big title. People have anticipated it. And there are many fans of Halo. You can't, you know, that's not on dispute. And it's, it's a title I did obviously have an interest in because I played the, uh, played the earlier ones. Um, and it, Microsoft, whilst they bought it off somebody else, uh, it's it's a decent it's a decent software and uh, people are, uh, are very much looking forward to it. So uh, kudos uh, for once to the to the Microsoft uh, 360, at least in the eyes of the UK uh, Xbox 360. Um, and I'm probably going to get a load of hate mail over, but I apologise. But uh, um, Xbox 360 Connect, anything on that? Any? Have we Did you hear about the Valve? No. Steam. Tell Steam us. coming to Linux. Oh yes, yes. Sure, Sorry. you've heard about yeah. it. So, so some people are hypothesizing that perhaps uh, 
And by the way, the company is run by a former Microsoft employee, which makes it interesting because it was slamming uh, Vista 8 a great deal even before it came out. But since, we, since we're talking about it, Intel CEO also said it was prematurely released, that it wasn't ready for release. So you know, lots of very notable people are talking against the uh, latest release of Windows. Mm-hmm. But in any case, it's...